Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun, you're watching Israeli News Live, and on the screen here and behind me here, we are watching a massive Turkish military uh, troop movement, military convoy coming inside of the country of Syria. Very troubling situation going on. As those of you know, this morning we brought out about Nikki Haley, uh, the United States representative at the United Nations there, speaking, kind of suggesting that the U.S. is willing to go at Syria alone, dealing with Syria the, uh, and, and basically punishing Syria for what has happened with the chemical weapons uh, attack that happened down in uh, Khan Shakun, which clearly was never the Syrian government's fault. There's been no evidence that really supports that theory to begin with. But the U.S., after Russia vetoed uh, uh, the, the re request to move forward with yet even more investigations on this, the, uh, Russia had vetoed that, and now the U.S. is saying that they would go at it alone. Now, we have stated now for quite some time, for a very long period of time now, that we believed that the Turkish government and the coup that happened was all staged and was only be used as a pretext in the near future to actually use the Turkish military as the ground forces uh, in order to, to overthrow President uh, Assad in a future battle. And that we believe that Russia was being duped into believing that the Turkish government was actually on their side. Now, I don't know really yet why this massive convoy has moved into Syria. I highly doubt that President Bashar al-Assad has welcomed them. They are supposedly headed to Aleppo. Uh, the Iranian news even tried to report about this. Their site has been hacked and knocked offline to where you can't even see where they've reported about this particular incident, though. Uh, but it's very troubling to me as I watch what's going on because I realize that, you know, who knows when, but the time would come that no doubt the U.S. will take into a retaliatory measure against Bashar al-Assad and even possibly overthrow him. Uh, as we recall a little while back, there was uh, a, one of the ministers of Israel was speaking about Russia, that they need to get out of uh, Syria while they have the opportunity. Now we see that the Saudis and the Israelis together, my own people, the Israelis, wanting to deal with Iran. Uh, they're, they're claiming that Iran is the major threat in the region right now. And as we've stated over and over here on Israeli News Live, that Iran would not even be an issue had Israel come to the defense of our own people because the Syrians are, the mothers of Israel are Syrians to begin with. So we should have come to the defense of uh, Syria and, and drove ISIS out of the country. Unless for some reason we're helping ISIS in the country, which is totally... Uh, absurd for that to be even the case. I do know that my good friend who has passed away, God rest his soul there, Barry, uh, Barry Chamish. Barry had said to me on many occasions that he believed that Israel had a hand in uh, some of these issues with ISIS. But of course, he did know that the U.S. created ISIS, uh, but that the government, Israeli government may be using that to their advantage. Now, as we look at this, I want to share some more things here with you. Uh, also, uh, we have, let me see, this is another one here, AICS, Turkish convoy enters Syria through Idlib government. This was nine hours ago uh, that this was actually posted there. You can see it, there, the, it was still daylight at that time. Uh, but there, of course, as we're seeing the footage that, we're, that we were showing you there uh, on the Twitter account here, World on Alert, uh, World on Alert is showing this uh, four hours ago. So the the continuing continual movement of Turkish military troops across the border is very alarming to me uh, in the respect of going towards Aleppo. Now, let's quickly. I did not bring up a map on this as of yet, but let's just quickly bring up uh, Google Maps there to kind of get an idea. Let's take a look at the region here. Uh, so that we can see exactly what we're looking at because, of course, this news is just now breaking here. Uh, and Aleppo, right here on the northern part of the screen, Aleppo was the big city that was such a major battle for the Syrian government and Russian forces, and they overtook Aleppo. Now they're talking about moving them to Idlib, uh, down towards this region here, into the west of Aleppo there, uh, who knows what the battle is really going to be about? Why are they moving into this area here? Uh, you know, is it something to do with Lebanon? Is it something to do with Syria? 
why are they even crossing into the border of, uh, of Syria? To begin with, a sovereign nation is beyond me, other than what we've seen with what happened earlier today with Nikki Haley. Uh, and that's something that if you go to our Facebook page, Israeli News Live, uh, you can visit there. We're, we're, we try to stay on top of posting different news uh, articles that come out. Some of the latest ones are from our good friend, Sister Rosa. Uh, she's always sending us nice uh, articles there. But uh, uh, one thing there, if we drop down here quickly, maybe we can pick up the article that we posted earlier with Nikki Haley and what was being done there. I th thought we'd have that up on here, but maybe not. Um, I know it was on there. I guess here we go right here. This is the one with Nikki Haley earlier today. RT, RT U.S. ready to fight for justice in Syria without you in approval. That's why I think that what's happening with Turkey right now and their movement is part of the ground forces assault from the north. Uh, if in fact the U.S. does take and decide to go against Syria alone, will this be the, the, the um, justification that the U.S. uses in order to try to topple Bashar al-Assad once and for all? Don't forget, there's a famous scripture in the Bible, the bars of Damascus are broken. I have really have felt like in my own heart, the bars of Damascus represents Russia's S-300 and S-400 system because those systems, when they stand up, it's like a bunch of gigantic bars there. And that is what is being used to protect Syria from outside interference, whether it be uh, the U.S., whether it be Israel, any other nation. Now, Israel has not had a problem with the S-300, S-400 system other than what has been used by the Syrian government. Russia has always turned it off in the case of Israel, trying to help Israel deal with Hezbollah, shipping, we shipping weapons into southern Lebanon, uh, etc. there. But when it comes to the other side, when it comes to a massive uh, uh, launch against the Syrian government with Russian forces inside of Syria, it may be a whole different ball game. That may be where truly the S-300, 400 bulk M has also been moved into there as well by Russia, dealing, that would help deal with Patriot missiles, etc. Will the Russians get involved? Only time will tell, we don't know. Could this be the catalyst? Could this be the flashpoint that ignites the world? Could easily turn that way. Friends, it's a very volatile situation right now. Do pray for the people that are living in this region of the world. Pray for Israel. Remember, our Jewish brothers and sisters that live in the country of Israel there, uh, regardless of what the leaders of the country do, these are the, the, the children of Israel that have returned home. But as Micah says in the prophecy of Micah chapter 4, you know, why do you cry out aloud? Is there no king in thee? Has thy counselor perished? You know, you know, God says that you're a, a woman that's in travail and you will go forth out of the city. It's some very troubling times that are ahead for Israel as well. And no doubt because as Micah prophesies, it was because of the leaders of Israel that have, that, you know, the Tower of Migdal that have brought all this trouble upon us there is our own leaders. You know, God doesn't fault the ones that come back that were halt and lame and, and withered and, and, and et cetera, as Micah so clearly says. Look at there, they knock RT right off of line. Boy, they, they don't like RT's articles up at all. RT is definitely being targeted on a regular basis there. Uh, but anyway, very troubling situation right now. Again, the, 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 the military... Uh, has uh, the Turkish military has crossed into Syria, large convoys, still, as to my knowledge, has not reached mainstream media. As well, also, Rosa had sent me this article here from Prison Planet. Alex Jones here was bringing out bombshell report, U.S. weapons stockpiled used by ISIS found in Syria. This was on November the 15th that Alex Jones brings this out, including some of the, uh, some of the very underhanded things that were being done in the country there that Alex talks about on his program there. Very troubling indeed, and it just goes to show our purpose in Syria has not been on the up and up. It's really a tragedy for our wonderful men and women in uniform that fight for our country, fight for our freedoms and things like that, to realize that our country is being used for, for propaganda purposes, only to be able to gather up the lands of the Middle East. Who's it for, the Rothschilds? I mean, tell me, what is this really for? I mean, is this the, is this the Rothschilds project? This is not what the children of Israel that came home to see the Messiah came home for. We didn't come home 
uh, to take and drive out all of the occupants uh, that are around us. Those are some of our family. Those are some of the house of Israel that are scattered about also throughout Syria, as clearly noted in the book of Isaiah in chapter 9, where it says Ephraim and Manasseh would fight against each other. That's the U.S. and Russia, or NATO and Russia fighting against one another. And then they turn on Judah. You know, I mean, this is really a mess. And of course, uh, Isaiah 17 also puts the blame on Israel, failing to remember the rock of her salvation. Uh, and this is why the fall of Damascus actually comes. We may be sitting on the precipice of that happening. This movement of Turkish military forces has me wondering what's going on. I can't say for sure, but I do wonder. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.